Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Erickson TV, courtesy of Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hey, Curtis. Hey, everybody. Hey, Lauren. Um, some of our, some of our uh, Erickson uh, t uh, TV episodes, we tackle uh, easy issues, and some of them we tackle hard issues. So okay. I thought today we're going to do a harder issue. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, it's one that uh, was you know, so we don't we, we don't duck we don't duck the tough headlines. So this was a uh, USA Today finance headline. It's titled "Most Americans Do Not Trust Their Financial Advisors." Should they? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh -oh. this, poll, this poll, recent poll done in 2016, said 65 percent of those respondents said that they mistrust mistrust the financial services industry to some degree. In fact, only two percent of the respondents claim to trust their Financial professionals a lot, while only 15% said they trust them a little. Hmm. Um, and so part of it was uh, so then they used some other statistics, like they said between uh, 2005 and 2015, there were an estimated 87,000 financial advisors who were found guilty of some form of misconduct. Uh, these you know transgressions range from unsuitable advice to unauthorized activity to, all, to outright fraud. Um, however, what they did say also though is that's only. The 87,000 advisors, uh, advisors uh, were only 7% of the total sample size. Okay, so right. so most advisors are, are f fairly high integrity. Right. So what you take on that so far? Okay, <laughs> so when you when you first read the headline, I thought that it meant that um, uh, people didn't trust their own financial advisor, like the one they were specifically seeing. And I thought, wow, that's that's an interesting yeah. life yeah, decision yeah. you made there. To, yeah. But no, what what it was saying is that. Um, about what two thirds of people have some mistrust of the financial services industry. Well, if you had asked me if I trust the financial services industry, I'd have probably said no. Okay. So I think I think that uh, I think that I might be might be in that two thirds. I think that the industry uh, has too much. I think there's too much confirmation bias. In other words, I think that there's too many people in our industry who believe something and then just ignore any kind of evidence right. that that. That doesn't fit, and I think that there are, you know, I mean, leaving aside that yes, there are people who commit fraud or whatever. I think that the the more common widespread problem is you have too many people who are in love with a certain way that they think you should right. invest, or they sell right. commission products and they're in love with a certain company, and they they are not really paying attention to the client that's uh, sitting right. And suitable investment, yeah, and conflict of interest, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so then, so then it goes. The article goes into uh, another kind of kind of the the opposite. They surveyed all the 401k um, you know, retirement plan oh, right. participants, yeah. and a, a fully 58% of the savers in these plans said that they would like more help uh, in financial advice and choosing investments. Right. <laughs> so there's kind of like a conflict right there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, and uh, they also said, this is the last thing I'll say about uh, why people may need a financial advisor, is that uh, a full, a full um, Huge percentage of people um, are, are investing too conservatively uh, for their retirement, and they're missing right. out on uh, potential returns. And so uh, they talk a little bit about the new Department of Labor rule that may give uh, a little bit more confidence in the financial industry because of the laws. We're not going to talk about that today, but right. uh, I guess the takeaway is it's pretty clear based on how many people fail at investing that good financial advice is important. Yes. It's just, I guess it's just a question of how can an individual sift through the advisors right. to find the right one. Well, and that's one of the reasons why we do a lot of education. Mm -hmm. If uh, if if you don't you don't need to want to do your own investing, but if you don't know how you would do your own investing, it's going to be very hard for you to figure out whether your financial advisor knows what they're doing or not, or whether they're just kind of recommending what's comfortable for them. Right. Right. So that's 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 why we concentrate so much on education. Right. And I think if you're looking for a financial advisor, besides you know you you know you know we would be happy to give you objective advice, but. Take a look at how they're getting compensated. Would be one yes. thing to look at. Um, take take a look at uh, uh, you know you know do they have any kind of uh, back backup of how, why they're promoting you know or, right. or, uh, <laughs> recommending a certain type of investment. Yes. And uh, perhaps you know ask for maybe uh, a look at audited returns. Right. That would be a good one. So okay. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of uh, Erickson TV. We'll see you next time. Bye now. See you next time.